Hello everyone, welcome back to Smart Connection Podcast, where smart minds connect. I'm Patricia, and today we're going to talk about an exciting topic, the importance of data security in contact center. And I'm not alone, joining me today, William, as ID Security and Compliance Specialist at KPSG. Hello William, how are you doing today? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great too. So you've been studying and working in data security, right? Yes. Okay, and recently, We've been hearing a lot of issues or cases regarding customer data, especially from well-known organization in Indonesia. So how can we keep customer data safe? Um, to keep customer data safe, I would um, encourage the concept of data security, which is uh, it, it encompasses a wide range of measures um, designed to safeguard sensitive customer information, including um, personal details um, such as uh, your banking records, your uh, payment details, your um, your name, your uh, national identity card number, things like that. Ah, okay. And if we're talking about contact center industry, what's the importance of data security? Uh, the importance of data security is uh, very critical in terms of the customer contact service industry, especially since most of our clients are financial and also insurance based. Um, data security is incredibly important. Mm, okay. And I'm just wondering, how about the Indonesian constitution? Is there a constitution that protects the data security itself? Uh, yes, uh, recently there's a law um, that was upheld in October 17th. Um, I believe it's called UU PDP. And mm-hmm. it um, encompasses uh, and encourages uh, data security for um, tech industries or anyone that's um, running a customer service contact center, such as um, our industry. Oh, okay. And talking about the type of data, there's a lot of type of data. And maybe in contact center, uh, what are type of data that you're usually manage or taking care of? Um, usually in contact centers, especially in the um, financial industry and the insurance industry, there's usually um, important and critical details belonging to the customer, such as their payment methods, their mm-hmm. um, insurance policies for the insurance industry, Uh, maybe their um, banking records or bank statements for the financial industry, Uh, maybe their personal details such as their family members that's connected to their insurance policy or perhaps um, their very own um, identification number for their KTP or maybe their passport numbers there as well. So those are the types of data that will be very critical and will be horrible if it were to leak out. So. What are the threats or challenges of the security in Connect Center? Uh, some of the threats that we face um, are cyber attacks, um, insider threats, and data breaches, include also um, physical security threats. However, the most concerning out of those four is usually internal threats. Um, it's easy to put up safeguards for um, cyber attacks or um, incoming um, or well-known attack um, patterns. Mm-hmm. However, it's much more difficult to uh, keep track of insider threats since people are um, people who are usually the biggest threats are usually those who are um, who knows the system well, who's been inside, who knows how 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 the safeguards fa- functions, how um, what preventive measures they have in place, and also how exactly to get around those. Mm, okay, so one of the most dangerous uh, threats is coming from the internal. Yes. Okay, but how can you address this kind of threats? To address these types of threats, um, I would encourage um, back to the first point, um, data security. Mm-hmm. Um, data security, it encompasses a wide range of practices, and one of those things include um, Keeping um, keeping track of um, insider threats and how um, how insiders within the corporation are able to access um, certain sensitive files or information. So one of those methods being um, role role based access control. Um, depending on what role you have, mm-hmm. um, they'll be granted certain permissions. However, not too much um, permission that they can go anywhere that they want. Mm, okay, but what kind of efforts that are example that Uh, your company, KPSG, has implemented this far? Um, Some of the efforts that we've implemented so far is um, um, role-based access control. Mm -hmm. Um, This is a, it's a feature in our um, cloud systems um, that 
enables or prevents people who lack um, proper clearance to access sensitive data or um, go where they please. And this prevents a lot of um, sensitive data being accessed by people who lacks access. Mm, okay. And in Kodak Sector, uh, maybe there's a lot of people talking about cloud mm -hmm. or on-premise. They Maybe they're comparing each other between cloud and on-premise. Which one is secure? Maybe you can sh share some of your opinions regarding this. Um, in regards to that question, it really depends on it's a matter of how much are you willing to um, spend um, mm -hmm. financially on your physical on-premise environment or a cloud environment. Usually I would go with a cloud environment since the people who are, um, and the corporations who are running these um, cloud data centers are usually larger corporations who are specialized and um, standardized um, using international standards such as ISO to enable them um, proper security measures and also proper measures to deal with any of um, any threats or cyber attacks that may be prevalent in today's world or their their particular area so perhaps a physical um, contact center or, or a physical data center is able to do the same amount of provisioning such as uh, another cloud and cloud uh, provider however um, you have to keep in mind that the players that you're um, going up against who provide these cloud data centers are people like Amazon, Microsoft, mm -hmm. uh, Tencent, and Alibaba with their Alibaba Cloud. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you mentioned about certification like ISO for mm -hmm. a company. And for personal, maybe like you, the IT security and compliance specialist, is there any certification that you should take? Um, there are plenty of um, certifications that you can take um, for an organization. I would mm -hmm. recommend that they comply with the international standards since um, their standards are well kept and well maintained and usually updated within a couple of years. Uh, for example, KPSG right now is certified for ISO um, 27001, um, the 2022 version. And for personal, um, I would suggest that you take a certification on your cloud platform to make sure that you understand the features and functions that you're able to do and what kind of um, security measures you can implement for your environment. Mm, okay, so if we're talking about the best practice, uh, what are the best practice to ensure the data security? Um, the best practices would be um, role-based access control. That's mm -hmm. um, number one, I think. Um, second would be data in, uh, encryption to make sure that the data that you uh, that you gather from your customers are well encrypted and aren't easily um, accessed or stolen um, if they do get broken in. Um, also, regular audits um, and monitoring of your um, sensitive data or environments to make sure that people who no longer work at the corporation aren't able to easily access the environment um, mm -hmm. from outside the organization and to monitor just to make sure that um, er every environment is behaving as, um, as, as predicted and there's nothing, uh, nothing unusual going on within those environments. And finally, um, I think another critical and important point would be employ employee training to make sure that um, employees who aren't um, within the um, tech sector are able to understand what types of threats there are and um, what types of um, traps there are that may, be, may lead to a data breach for your organization. Mm, okay, and in KPSG, I just wondering, do you guys has like a plan for a future improvement in data? Um, for future improvement, uh, currently we're focusing more on encryption and mm. also we're keeping track of um, case studies and also in, um, any recent cyber attack news um, within our um, neighbor, within our location of Asia, Southeast Asia. And we're keeping, um, keeping in mind of what kind of threats um, are the most common and also which ones are the most dangerous that we should prepare for. Mm, okay, so you guys should keep dated with what's going on regarding yes. the data security updates. Okay, and are there any case studies that you can share regarding the data security 
In terms of case studies, um, there's a recent um, data breach involving a large um, Japanese car corporation that um, was actually initially um, breached and their customer data was leaked. Um, mm -hmm. This included um, customer data for um, what types of car they bought, um, their payment methods, mm -hmm. um, their okay. back, um, their um, uh, financial planning for their cars, things like that. And to remedy this, um, the car corporation actually hired an Australian uh, tech uh, company in order to investigate and make sure that the data breach um, doesn't happen again and to investigate um, how extensive the data breach was. However, um, as it turns out, the data breachers also data breached the uh, uh, Australian tech company, leading to uh, leading to all of the Australian um, tech companies' uh, clients to also be leaked out, which included local governments and other private corporations in Australia. Mm -hmm. So this led to uh, uh, not, not just a two birds, one stone situation, but a three birds, one stone. Mm, so a lot, a lot of uh, things impacted from this leak. Yes. Mm, okay. And uh, maybe there's some viewers out there that wondering, is it safe to work with partners since maybe in operational kind of center, we believe there's a lot of data mm -hmm. and especially it's very confidential. So what do you think? Um, I would say um, those worries are warranted. Mm -hmm. And I would say the best solution to this would be to uh, make sure you investigate the companies that you're um, getting into a par partnership with to make sure that the, the things that they say that they're able to do, um, they're e actually able to perform mm -hmm. to make sure that um, they have the cr uh, credibility and also the work history to show that they're actually able to perform these tasks. Uh, okay, so the company must do the research and if they already get the, what we say, the most uh, trusted partners, they can surely work with the partners and ensure the data security. Yes. Okay, maybe that's all for today's session. So we can know there's a lot of impact and things uh, that is important to be known by the company out there. Thank you, William, for your valuable insights and your time today. It's been a pleasure to be here. Sure. And for the viewers, thank you very much for today's session. If you guys have any question regarding data security or contact center, you can visit our website at kpsg.com or our social media below. And also, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to our channel. See you.